What's up everybody, Sensei here. Excuse the wind, hopefully it's not picking up too much into the mic. We're gonna do a little bit of uh, something a little different today. We're gonna do a talk and ride, a little bit of riding and a little bit of talking. And um, I just want to give you guys a perspective on what I'm going through and my learning process of learning how to ride this electric unicycle. Let's go. This is where I normally train. It's directly behind my garage and I don't think it normally shows up on camera but it's not flat ground as you can see this is pitched to the left now let me hold this camera straight you can see it's pitched to the left so a lot of times when I'm starting I'm a little wobbly I mean I still had to practice getting my balance but it's pitch and I did this for a reason. I noticed, I'm gonna show you the other way as well. Look at this. I noticed when I was learning on my M10-3, I started out in this area. Again, this side is pitched to the right. See, look, perfect example. Straighten the camera touch, it's pitched. And I noticed that it was forcing me to counterbalance myself because I'm looking at the terrain that I want to have to ride in, like in New York City. That's anyone that's ridden in New York City, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The road conditions are pretty messed up. But I noticed on my M103, when I learn how to ride on this uneven, it's smooth, but again, it's uneven. When I got on flat ground, it was so much easier to turn. Sorry about, sorry about the wind noise. And I'm going to move a little bit further down. You can get a better idea of what I'm talking about. Like if I was going to come down here and turn to the right, I would have to balance my weight on my left and right foot, counterbalancing and turning because I'm going downhill. So I noticed when I translated to me turning on flat ground, it was so much easier. That's why I love training back here because it forces me to learn how to balance myself. That's why sometimes you'll see me when I start off, it's like you'll see me like fall off to one side. It's because I'm constantly trying to counterbalance myself. Now, some people might not agree with that, but this is how I'm training myself so I learn how to balance my weight so when I do get in favorable conditions, it's a lot easier for me to ride. Now, if I go further down, it levels out a little bit, but most of the time I'm, I'm riding on a pitch. And sorry for the wind, but another thing that I notice and I keep drilling myself on is foot positioning. If you look, you know what I mean? Feet, on the pedals, 
as far as your toes being turned out, toes being turned in like this, your feet being uh, forward or being back on the pedals, it all makes a huge difference. And these are things that I go through constantly just experimenting, trying to find what is most comfort, you know, what's most comforting for me when I ride. I don't care about making mistakes because you're not going to learn if you don't make mistakes. That's why a lot of times you'll see me, I'm, I'm all over the place. I'll try different foot positions. And um, what I'll do is I'll ride, I'll get to a wall like this and I'll brace myself and I'll look down to see where my feet are positioned. I know some people say, don't look down when you ride. I don't look down when I ride, but I'll look down when I get to a my stop point and I will see where my feet are and I'll look to make sure that I don't put them in that position again. So foot positioning is a big, big issue and you have to find what is most comforting to you. Everybody rides different. Find out what works for you. As you could see, there was a huge difference. I mean, those were my first zips on the wheel for today. My first three or four passes on the wheel for today. And you can see a huge difference, excuse me, a huge difference in my riding from yesterday and my riding today. It's a huge difference. It's like night and day. That's why I said just a couple of hours makes a huge difference. You just gotta keep, just keep practicing, find out what works, what doesn't work. And just just go through the process go through the process and uh, that, that that's really about it man like I said I'm not afraid to experiment and one of the most important things and I learned this when I uh, learned how to snowboard learn the basics the basics will get you out of any kind of trouble that you're in whether you're on a snowboard or an electric unicycle learn the basic movements that's probably one of the most important things i'm not a pro i'm still a beginner but learn the basics as you can see the difference between my riding from yesterday and today is huge Oh! 
keep on practicing, all right? You keep on practicing no matter what. All right, I have some notes. I'm gonna have to pick my voice up a little bit because the wind is blowing. Uh, another thing that I do, I constantly go over drills. Just like when I used to run track and field, we would run these things called ladders, you know? 200, 300, 400, 600, 800, and back down a ladder. I do the same thing when I'm riding. I'll repeat the same thing over and over and over again doing it in just different increments you know what I mean get on the wheel hop off the wheel get on the wheel it's just I just do everything I just drill 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 and I think for me it works instead of just going out and just going on a straight ride that might work for some people but for me I love doing these different drills you know what I mean like I'll have a day where I'm just gonna turn practice turn practice turn practice turn but I like doing things where it's almost, you're doing it subconsciously, but you don't even realize it that you're working on a certain movement. Like when I'm riding in this pitch movement, whether it's to the right or to the left, and I go to turn, it makes turning harder, like I said before, but it also makes it easier when I get onto flat ground. That's what I'm talking about. I just do different drills. So I'm gonna show you uh, a couple things that I do. Another thing is balance, balance. And I had a down pack with the M10-3. And I noticed when I started, I'm gonna give two scenarios on the wheels. When I started on the M10-3, I was balancing even. That's why I would always fall off. I'm like, man, how come I'm always falling off? And it was like, I would get on, boom, fall off. Get on, I wasn't leaning enough. I wasn't leaning enough. So what I started doing, I would over lean. And that's one thing I wasn't doing on what I, I didn't carry that over to the Tesla. I wasn't over leaning. Now, hear me out. The thing with over leaning is I would over lean to get my momentum forward and then I would find that sweet spot. And I think I found it now. And then I would dial back the lean to where I feel comfortable. And I'm at that point now where I'm dialing the lean back and now I'm balancing out, just trying to figure out again the sweet spot with my foot position and I believe that I found it but I know for me starting on an over lean to get my forward momentum then dialing the lean back and I actually learned that and I give credit to the brother who stride on this where now if you have a leaning forward everyone rides different but one thing I learned off him is like leaning too far forward and having all that weight over you know over over your axis and you hit a bump or the wheel gets uneasy you're coming off the wheel so that's what I'm learning how to do now. And he came up with the term, torque it. I totally understand what he's talking about. And I love using that movement. I call it power forward. Same, same, same thing. It's just learning how to power that wheel, position your feet to where you're not over leaning. And you strive, thank you, because everyone needs to go watch that video. Um, I'm actually gonna probably put a link in the description below on that. And to give him more credit, even when you're, take if you're fighting, right? Let me put this paper so it doesn't blow away. Hopefully I'm still in the camera. You're fighting. When well, you're gonna take and you're gonna throw a punch, you're gonna throw a hook, what do you do, man? You, tor <clears throat> you, tor you torque your hips, you put your hips into it. You get that torque, you get that power, that power forward coming from your hips and it generates through your whole body. 
that's the same thing when I'm riding. These are different things that go through my head when I ride. How can I control this um, this EUC without just you know uh, over leaning or just overworking the unicycle? You know what I mean? That's something that I'm trying to learn how to do. I just want my style to be just fluid and effortless. That's what I'm working on. So balance is key. You have to find out what works for you. And that's why I don't care if I mess up. I don't care if I fall. I don't care if I make a fool of myself. I was out here learning. People were laughing at me. I don't care. I don't care. I'm gonna ride till I get good. Ride till I get good. I don't care what people think, okay? So let's get back to doing some drills. One thing as riders that we need to remember Everything you work on doesn't necessarily have to be on your electric unicycle. It doesn't have to happen on your EUC. Take this simple drill, for instance. This, to me, will help your foot speed and coordination when getting off the pedals. Don't look down. Don't look down at your feet. Don't look down at your feet. See, same thing. You can switch sides. You can go. I know it sounds crazy, but this will get you in a habit. Thing. Go back to forward. Don't look down at your feet. Don't look down at your feet. It sounds crazy, but something so simple will coordinate you to get on and off your unicycle faster. Don't knock it till you try it. And it's great for cardio. how much easier I'm getting on the wheel and getting off the wheel. I count those drills that I was doing. I'm telling you, it works. Sometimes the unconventional methods work. on YouTube. <laughs> 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 Alright, I'm going to speak up a little bit because of the wind. Wind just keeps going up, you know, going up and coming down. It's driving me nuts. I'm going to speak up a little bit. But one thing that I love about riding an EUC, <laughs> I'm going to keep that in there. Anyway, one thing that I love about it is how you can take other sports and incorporate it when you're trying to develop your style of riding. Now, me, I grew up roller skating. I probably learned how to skate before I could walk, okay? And where I come from, the style of skating was called stride skating. We used to stride skate, and then some other places, they call it jam skating. For those of you that skate, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But what's great about that style 
why it's so smooth is that you're riding on the balls of your feet. You're transferring the weight on the balls of your feet. I was like, man, that'd be cool if I could take and incorporate that skating style on my AUC. And I was looking at some of the New York riders. I was looking at VT in one of the videos, and that brother was just flowing. He was flowing. He's, he's on his toes. You can see his weight shifting. He wasn't flat-footed. I was like, man, think of boxing. I've been a big fan of boxing forever, you know? And let's just take uh, Mayweather Jr. And if you look at him, what does he do? He's always on his toes. Now, he will go flat-footed, but most of the time, he's on his toes. Why? When you're on your toes, your reaction time is faster. You can, you, you can get in, you can get out a lot quicker. And I was like, that makes a lot of sense. Now, if you go, like I said, with VT on his toes, you look at some of the other New York City riders, they're on their toes. And I was like, man, I have to learn how to incorporate that into my riding style just like boxing. Again, most boxers, you look at Muhammad Ali, right? Look at some of his vintage videos. What is he doing? Bam, bam, bam. Look at Mike Tyson. Look at some of his newer stuff. How he's moving. He, he's on, he's on, he, he's on, he's on his toes. He's on his toes. Boom. Because you can move. If, you, if you're flat-footed, it's almost to the point where you feel like you're, 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 you're stuck to the ground and you can't move. It's like you're always going to be a millisecond behind your true reaction time unless you, you know, like when you're on your toes, you, you, can re, you can react a lot faster. So anyway, that's my mindset. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm trying to incorporate into my riding style. I'm enjoying myself as you can see. Again, enjoy the process. Trust yourself. Go through your drills. Get on your wheel. Ride your wheel like you hate it. My feet are still slipping off the pedals a bit, but I got the grip tape and later on I'm gonna put it on. Do you see the difference a few hours makes? You see the difference? Gotta have faith in Sensei. I'm telling y'all, there's a method to my madness. I kid you not. Practice. Just practice and just take your time and go through the process. It works. Trust yourself.